What's good, everybody, and welcome back to the channel for another episode of our Madden 23 Brooklyn Bulls expansion draft only franchise. We are officially in the off season. Our division rival Baltimore Ravens winning the Super Bowl against the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, quarterback of the league was Tua. Doug Peterson, former Eagles coach. Shout out to Doug, wins coach of the year. Offensive player is Josh Jacobs. Defensive player, Von Miller. Offensive rookie of the year ends up going to Charlie Adkins over Deacon Burgess. Deacon Burgess won it for our conference, but Charlie Adkins wins the overall rookie of the year for the offense. Ricky McKinney does win overall defensive rookie of the year. And now that we're here in the offseason, this has been something that I've been kind of looking forward to, honestly, for the last several episodes. Once it kind of became clear that we weren't going to maybe sneak into the playoffs, but nor were we having a bad enough season where, you know, the top end pick in the draft was going to be available to us. So very excited for this offseason. We've done a ton of work in the draft and... Let's see if there's anyone who we haven't yet retained that we'd like to do so prior to free agency. Starting with Benjamin Gore here, who got up to star dev. Uh, when we preview kind of the whole team, we'll look at all the star, the sorry, the dev ups and the dev downs. But he has orange interest in coming here. He likes the historic championships of the Steelers since we uh, relocated the Steelers to the Bulls but otherwise doesn't really like our team probably have to overpay a little bit here and if we're doing it for the next two years I'm fine to give him a two year 10 and he will accept that offer didn't want to lose one of the few players with dev traits we have on this team another guy we talked about last episode in the season stats awards and highlights episode that i think is probably going to stick around oh excuse me if we can get that resigning done just because he is kind of a replacement level player that which you know for this state of the franchise is you know a compliment and he will stick around for a two-year 10 million dollar deal Definitely way overpaying these guys. Kendrick Ingram will do next. But I'm fine overpaying for the next couple of years because since we are a draft only franchise, we're not going to be having anybody with big contracts so for the next couple of years. Let's overpay some guys that I plan on having starters. Uh, Frank Brewer is a member of that list. There's a lot of guys with red interest in returning to this team. That's going to be concerning it. Like right now it's fine to be overpaying these players, but once we get to the point of the franchise where Frank Brewish says no, huh? He's already 25 years old. How much is the franchise tag? Frank Brewer, somebody that I wanted back, you're gone. I'm not I don't even care if you know we have 200 million in the cap room just paying 23 and a half million to a guy who's not even 70 overall 
just out of principle would hurt my soul. I would like to bring back Miguel Matias. I'm not sure about our punter, but kicker. He's got good kick power. Two year 10. He says yes. I will offer our punter here. Uh, just in case there's not a better punter that we can get in the draft or post draft UDFA. I'll give him this this deal. If he says no, he's gone. He stays. Rayshon Bass, a depth defensive lineman. We'll keep Glenn Warner as a backup quarterback. These guys are asking for so little that even if we end up not keeping them around, like the penalty for releasing them is so small. I do not want to lose Frank Brewer. Let's just take a look at our squad here. This will give us an opportunity to look at any dev ups and dev downs. But outside linebacker after him is a major, major drop off. So he's a 68 base overall. Our next highest is a 64 base overall. 65. I can't pay him $23.5 million. He's gone. Everyone kept their dev. Nobody lost it. Nobody gained it. I'm not surprised. Uh, Deacon Burgess was already X Factor. He couldn't go up. Johnny Lovelock had a good season. Too good to go down, but not good enough to go up to X Factor. Bellman was decent. Grimes wasn't good enough to go up to star, neither was Holloman. So no surprise with the no dev movements there. The most surprising by far is uh, Godfrey moving up to superstar. Interesting to me. Um, I think that dev up is almost purely based on how he started the season. Because he did start the season pretty high. He was making some plays. Down the stretch didn't make as many plays, but... Uh, I guess a hot start was enough to get him up a dev. We already talked about it when we re-signed him, but Benjamin Gore goes up to star dev, which he got the scenario. He had a breakout scenario to go up to star dev in the season, which he got, but the game didn't give it to him. So I guess now here he is at star. Definitely wouldn't have had a good enough season where if he was already star, he would not have got up to superstar. He had a decent season, but nothing spectacular. A little disappointed that Kurt Banks did not go up in dev. I thought he had a really good year. And if this is season isn't going to get him up to superstar, I just don't know if we're ever going to have an off-ball linebacker. You know, stats, upgrade. Just the way that you play when you're in the game, there are too many assisted tackles, whereas everyone else in the simulated games is getting all these solo tackles, which man just values higher than the assisted tackles, or total tackles, I should say. Course, we won't be signing any free agents, but let's take a look at who is in this class. Technically, the second class, as we started a year into the future here. Jalen Hurts was not re signed by the Philadelphia Eagles. That's interesting because they are one of the two teams ahead of us. Uh, I took a look off camera, and it turns out we actually got the third overall pick. Let's see if that remains the case here. Oh, this is rough. This is exactly what I didn't want to happen there are two players i like at the top of this draft and they're going in the two picks ahead of our pick so going on two to end the end of the season actually got us up to the third overall pick but even that's not high enough if neither of these teams are taking quarterback larry palmer who's number two overall on the big board then my two favorite non-quarterbacks in the class are going the two picks ahead of us that is the last thing that i want We'll see if that remains the case by Mock Draft 5. If that's the case, uh, I don't know. Let's take a look at this free agency class, though. Nick Bose is up for grabs. We're trying Gary, Jalen Hurts, C.D. Lamb, T. Higgins. So T. Higgins was not retained by the Bengals in our division. Really good. Like, really good free agency class. Two as a superstar in this week. In mock draft two, the Saints had the number one pick overall pick, and they were picking Larry Palmer, the quarterback. 
All right, so th- now it looks like the Saints are high on Tom Brackett. So at least one of the two players that we like at the top of this draft. It's not Nick Little. I don't know why they're having us take Nick Little. He's not even like, if you look at our favorite boards, he's not at the top. So is Danny Goodrich dropping all the way to nine. It's interesting. In terms of, of a game plan for this draft, that is interesting. He could drop as far as nine in this scenario like this. Of course, Nick Little wouldn't also go at three, though, so it's hard to judge the validity of him going at nine because the draft gets kind of messed up at big three. Like, let's just take a look at our favorite sport. Danny Goodrich is number two. How far down our favorite sport is Nick Little? He's number 10 on our favorite sport, but the mock draft is having us take him at three. Let's take a look at the final athletic measures for some of these prospects. Kayla Von Richardson, man. Great strength, elite speed, elite acceleration. He is a player. He is it within the percentage that where if we were to focus him, we'd get him up to 100%. I would like to do that. I want to know if that injury is F. It's on the high end, which I'm praying it would be, then I think it'd be worth a trade up. If it ends up being F, maybe you have to pass on him here. But if he has like C injury and A power moves and A awareness, B block shed, he's on the high end of a lot of these ranges. Be worth looking into trading up for him. Position of great need. We need help on our front seven so much, both getting to the quarterback and stopping the run. I really like Danny Goodrich. If he truly is dropping to maybe around the nine range, I could consider trading up back up for him. Elite speed, four, two, five speed. He's really good. Doesn't have a lot of A's. Doesn't have anything below C. In fact, he only has two C's in play rec and block shed. Ton of B's. So six foot two player. Blazing fast. Re- with good skills. 21 years old. It's a hard miss. Guaranteed top five talent in this class. Rick Biggers, just to take a look at him because he's somebody that I know. Uh, was somebody that I was considering drafting with maybe our second first round pick, but he has F injury. I wish he didn't because, you know, A hit power, A power moves, B finesse moves. Oh, that looked like a combination for a good player. But we know he's like adequately graded. He's not a steal and he's got F injury. Both of those players run ahead of us. Maybe we could have used this draft to draft a quarterback. Still not opposed to the idea. I have not made up my mind on what I want to do this offseason yet. I'm going to kind of talk through it. Let's take a look at some of these final athletic ratings for the quarterbacks. So he ends up on the high end of both his throw power and his speed. Not good in play action, which that is an that is an attribute that's hard to upgrade. Two Bs and an A for his accuracies. That's kind of my baseline of what I want. A under pressure, B on the run. Those two are important as well. He's just, you know, slightly above average throw power, slightly above average athleticism. I'd rather have like solid or good at one and then great to lead at the other. Something like Tom Brackett, who has the great to elite arm and then solid to good speed. In fact, the, the high end of his under pressure is B, though, and his throw on the run is C. High end of his play action is B. 
you know, could fit the if his the high end of his accuracy is what his medium accuracy is, he could fit what I want in terms of accuracies, but Wayne Henderson, great size, but he's 23 years old. Big arm, cannot move. But A under pressure, A play action, A deep accuracy. Talk about a guy who coming in as a rookie could be better at hitting Deacon Burgess on those downfield routes, something that I stressed in the off-season highlight, uh, the highlight video, excuse me, with Deacon Burgess, somebody that I just want to get more consistently downfield. You need a quarterback that can hit him. Blaine Henderson could be that guy. We want a 23-year-old guy that has no mobility, though. That's a lot of A's. A break sack. We don't know what his throw on the run is, but he's not going to be running much. Out of the three guys, I would rank... Tom Brackett as the least. But he's, guy, he's the guy that's like the closest in terms of physically what I want. Joseph Ryan has the best accuracy. He has a step down arm from Henderson. Still not much of a mover despite his small size. So even though he has two A accuracies and a B and A under pressure, A to C on the run, A, play a, a to C play action, just don't know if he's athletic enough or has the size thresholds. If I had to rank these truly, I think Blaine Anderson is my favorite. Larry Palmer. These two are like the two that I would actually consider taking. These two are just guys that I like, but I don't love enough to, to think I'd actually bet on them. Brian Phillips is another guy. He ends up with the high end of his speed. I really wish I needed to draft running back more. I think he's pretty good. John Howard, let's take a look at him here. I just want to preview maybe the guys I like most at each position. Ends up with the elite speed and acceleration. Great jumping and change of direction. Day three receiver, maybe? Tight ends. I like the other guy more, but it's more realistic that we would get a guy like Bob Harris here. Just under 4.7 speed might not be good enough. Especially with B to D run block, though we might pass on tight end this year. David Cooper is my favorite offensive lineman in this class. Great strength, good speed, great acceleration. Bad at pass block power, but at least C and everything else. I like that a lot. Really, really high on my board. I think he can play tackle. Although, you know, pass block power is important to a tackle. He'd be like our most athletic offensive lineman. I also like Spencer Cheeks here. A decent bit. Good strength, good speed, good acceleration. Good pass blocker. But C to F, lead block. C to F injury, B to D impact. That's why he's available on day three, though. Expensive line-wise. I really like Jacques Harper, and he is available later in the draft now. Down to round two to three. A hit power, pursuit, tackle, A to C block shed. What made him drop, though? When we previewed defensive line, he had not dropped. Somebody else I really like, Dennis James. Could be our replacement for outside linebackers, which is where he'd play in a 3-4. Come, would come in with A power moves. Has no strength, but he's playing outside linebacker. Solid enough at, with the speed. Power rusher only. But just a guy you can get on day three that has an A. A really weird body type. I would, don't think I've ever seen a defensive lineman under six foot in the draft. I want to take a look at these two 
beefy boys. I'd love to get a pure nose tackle for this team. Elite strength, we expected that. 44 reps, 45 at the pro day. Elite strength, solid speed, decent acceleration. B block shed, C to both of his moves. Those C finesse moves is not going to be anything impressive at all. A play rec. Dylan McCollum, a year older. Worse with the speed. Worse with the bench reps. Worse with the power moves. So I think Cole Byers is better in every way. So I would prioritize Cole Byers. But if for some reason we miss out on Cole Byers, I would be more than happy to take Dylan McCollum. I would love these. This is a new prototype for a prospect that Madden 23 added. The nose tackle type. They have like really high strengths. What do you talk about? Kelevon Richardson. Not really looking at either of these guys. Linebacker just wasn't something that was I had much of in this draft. Corner, however, is a, is a position I really liked in this draft. There's a lot of size. Let's take a look at some of the final. Bobby Tarpley here ends up with good speed and elite acceleration, solid jumping. A, a injury, B man coverage. A lot of A to C's there. I would love to see if there were A's or C's. Harold Wolf from California. B man coverage, C zone coverage, elite speed. But look at the difference in terms of the 40 times. We're talking about a full tenth of a second at the pro, pro day, more than that at the combine. But if we have to prioritize one of Caleb on Richardson or Danny Goodrich, or if we get neither of them because we decide to go quarterback, this could be a good consolation prize for corner, I think, in Harold Wolf. There's a couple guys you can get even later than that. First with Jarek Farmer here. Great speed, elite acceleration. A catching, B man coverage, C zone coverage. Pretty good. Bobby Harris, six foot three, you love it. 23 years old, you don't. Needed speed and acceleration. Good jumping, good change of direction. This is a very intriguing corner class. I, I think Danny Goodrich is the best one. He's got the best coverages. Uh, ran the fastest time. Six foot two. Guaranteed top five talent. Well, like a Harold Wolf or a Bobby Harris. Guys that are six foot three with elite speed. We can get later. I wouldn't be too sad if we ended up missing out on Danny Goodrich. I'd still like to get him, though. Safety. This guy's only on the board because he was the uh, like the player that the GM talks to you about. I don't think he's very good. I don't think the safeties in general are all that good. I haven't even scouted kickers and punchers yet. So with that information on the draft, who are we thinking of taking first? I think there's... Three main contenders. Caleb on Richardson. Danny Goodrich. Blaine Henderson, who's not a, currently in the top 10. Let's see where he ranks on the overall board. 13th. He's dropped eight spots. Why did he why is he dropped? Very interesting. What do we do here? I would love Caleb on Richardson. I want to focus on him to see if he has an F injury. I wish there was a time where we could focus scout him. It's like we're doing it now, but mock draft five is already out. So I can't figure out what he is. Because I'd like to, if he turns out that he has C injury on the high end and A power moves and his, some of his stuff is on the high end, I'd like to trade up with Philly. And then see it and see if Danny Goodrich still drops to nine in the mock draft. But there's just no way we're going to be able to see that. Let's see where all these players ended up going. Nick Bosa goes to the Bears, joins Justin Fields. Sean Gary returns to the Packers. Jalen Hurts goes to the Commanders. CD Lamb to the Broncos, T against the Seahawks. Nick 
Bosa and Justin Herbert team up in Chicago. I give this to the Falcons. Gabe Davis goes unsigned. So it looks like no major additions in our division. Not surprising. These guys are kind of up, up against the pat, up against the cap. The Bengals offense just got a lot worse at receiver. Major blows at receiver for the Bengals. That's big news. I mean, they their passing game. I mean, we beat the Bengals twice this season, but we had to get extreme turnover luck to do it. One Joe Burrow wasn't fumbling or throwing picks, he was throwing 20 yard completions. Losing two playmakers the caliber of Higgins and Boyd definitely hurts them. I'm confident they'll be able to replace that production though. Joe Burr is good enough. I want to focus Caleb on Richardson, find out if he's... I also want to focus Blaine Anderson. I want to get as good of an idea as I can. I know he wouldn't get to 100%. He should have been 100% if I scouted my focus scouting correctly in week eight. I just forgot to do it, which is very unfortunate. He's at the bottom around two to three. That's... Good to know. He's like one of the last round two to three guys. So we could, that's what, round three pick 14? We could maybe snag him with our third round pick without having to trade up. Let's take a look at Mac Trap 5. Now the Eagles are looking to go quarterback. The Saints are looking to go Caleb Von Richardson. Danny Goodrich goes sixth. Blaine Henderson goes ninth. So if we want Danny Goodrich or Blaine Henderson, no trade-ups necessary. If we want two of these guys, our second first-round pick is at pick 19. They have us taking David Cooper here. I imagine he'll be a bull. I don't imagine he'll be it. Uh our 19th overall pick. But that goes to show something I see in this class. Let's go back to prospects here. I don't love the back half of the first round. I like the first, I like the top end of this draft. You know, I like, let's just put these three players at the top of our board, the guys that we're considering the most. I like these three players. I don't love a lot of the rest of the top end of this draft. I like Nick Little, I do. If I needed middle linebacker more, I'd consider him. Not a three. You know, elite speed. He's got great size as well. What's his strength looking like? Solid. You know, A hat power, B block shed, A to C man, B to Z D zone, A to C tackle, A to C awareness. If I needed the middle linebacker a little bit more, I would love to have gotten Nick Little in this class. I just, we have Kurt Banks, who I thought played extremely well. I'm not drafting his running mate. We have Kendrick Ingram, who I think could start. We have some major holes. I like these two players. I like David Cooper and I like Jacques Harper. That This is who we should have spent it on. Dang it. This is who we should have spent our third slot on. I want to know what the I want to know what his block shed and power move are. We still just have the ranges for him because it, he's theoretically good. But we, if that ends up being C power move and C block shed, that's not that good, you know. Dang it, that's who we should have used it on for sure, no doubt. I like these nose tackles here. Like I, I like the middle of this draft and I like the top end of this draft. I just don't love the mid first to early, like first half of the second round I don't think is that good in this draft we have two picks in that range we have 19 and we have 35 do we trade those two picks so we can get two of our top end players I honestly think that's good which two do we take 
we wanted Caleb on Richardson and Danny Goodrich. If we wanted to give um, Eli Palmer another shot at quarterback. Requires to trade up to the number one overall pick. Is 19 and 35 enough to get up to the number one overall pick? Let's just take a look. What would it take to get up to the number one overall pick? Nineteen and thirty-five. Is that wet your whistle enough, Saints? You think it would require more than this, right? Let's see if it does. It does, but not by a lot at all. Here's the thing. We've or we already don't have a fourth. Don't want to give up third. Next year, we don't have any extra picks, right? This year is the last. We only had two years where we got extra picks. An extra first, second, and third this year. We're without our fourth and our seventh. Is a next year five enough? It is. Okay. Okay. We have the number one pick in this draft. 1935 and a future fifth. Obviously, that's not enough value in real life. This is not a franchise that's based in realism. I felt like I needed to emphasize this a lot in my San Antonio Express franchise, but I'm doing an expansion draft only franchise. The purpose of a franchise like this is to highlight the cool players that man generates in the draft classes. They made a lot of changes in man 23 to the draft. I want to highlight them. And so it requires me I, if there's players I like in the class that I want to get, go out and get them. Why did I do that before I figured out if he has F injury? <sighs> Here's the thing, though. Was, he might be good enough to take even with F injury. I mean, he has to be at this point. We already traded the pick for him. Let's find out if we traded a pick for an F injury player. He's a top five player in the class. That much I knew was going to happen. Great strength, elite speed, elite acceleration. Thank you. He has C injury. Oh. He had the high end on his injury. I feel like C to F like almost always results in F. That's just what it feels like to me. Thank you. Ends up in the high end on tackle and awareness and block shit and power. He was the high end on all of his ranges. This guy's better than I even thought he was. Is he generational? He might be. Four or five speed. A power moves, B finesse. He might be, I don't know. It feels like there's a lot, a lot of Bs and Cs on there, but they're at positions like Hit power. I feel like hit power is actually high on um, what do you call them? Generational defenders. Typically. At least I've seen like a couple generational defensive tackles and they always have like 90 something hit power. Oh, would I love a, a defensive tackle with like 95 hit power on my team. That would be sick. So we... Caleb on Richardson will be drafted by us. Let's get an updated look at what our picks look like. And then I'll also take a look at what our uh, positions of need are before I finalize what my game plan is with this draft. Taking a look at our picks. We now have the number one and number three overall pick in this class. Then going into the second, we have pick, what is that? It's 13, 14 in the second round. Pick three in the third, and then uh, 
a pick at the very back end of the third. And a fifth and a sixth. So let's take a moment now and just look at here our Brooklyn Bulls draft big board. Uh, I want to specifically look at here the grade ratings for positions and talk about maybe what I think our biggest needs are and what I want to hit. I already know what I want with the first couple picks in the draft, but let's talk about what we want. There's there's some picks in the second and third round that we have that are very, very valuable. And so what positions do I most want to attack? Taking a look here, quarterback D. Um, quarterback's one of the two positions that we're considering with the third pick overall. Wide receiver three at D. Something I would consider in day three. Right now we only have a pick in the fifth and sixth round on day three. I'd like to see if we, we can't trade down, whether from like pick three to pick four or five, something like that. Um, Because we know Danny Goodrich in mock draft five was going at six. But maybe a trade down there. I, I would like to pick up a fourth, maybe even two in this draft. We could maybe trade down from, you know, 46 into the 50s. Tight end two, not a priority in this draft. This might being an F. Left tackle, high, high, high priority. Uh, I would be shocked if one of our second or third round picks was not on an offensive lineman, specifically David Cooper. Both of our guards are Fs. That's bad, and I want to replace but I just don't know. I feel like they played good enough last year that we can go through one more year. Um, there's a couple day three offensive linemen. I could see one of the fifth or sixth being used on an interior offensive lineman, though. Defensively, we have a D corner three. Honestly, now that Clayton got superstars, you should probably put this up to B. One of the two positions we're looking at with pick three. Safety. A position I would love to get an upgrade at, but it's just not the class. Linebacker two. Really like Nick Little. Just don't love any mid-round prospects at off-ball linebacker, which is where I would target this draft. I'd be willing to draft one in the mid-rounds. Just the only two that I like are like round one to two guys. Interior defensive line. Oh my goodness. We have to be able to stop the run better than we did in year one. Massive, massive need. That's why one of those two nose tackles will be one of our third round picks. I can guarantee it. Edge. Pick number one. Pick number one. Actually, we lost Frank Brewer. We have two F edges. There's only one that we really like. and it's uh, Oh, no, there's, there's Dennis Allen too. So... Could be we fill both of these positions with the number one overall pick and with the day three pick with Dennis Allen, the 5'11 pa pass rusher. And then maybe a punter in the sixth round. So now we've taken a look at what our needs are. Let's game plan this draft. Let's game plan. If everything goes right, this is my draft. I don't know what I'm doing. Prospects. Okay, Kilowatt Richardson's going number one overall. I need to make a decision right now who I want between Blaine Henderson and Danny Goodrich. Either one, I could probably trade down a couple spots from three. Here's the thing. Okay, so let's talk about quarterback. Pros for drafting a quarterback. Uh, Eli Palmer was terrible. He threw like 50% of his passes, it felt like, were uncatchable balls. I feel like... I, I said it in the highlight um, episode. I feel like we're honestly a quarterback and a tackle away from having a good offense. And there's a tackle I like in the mid-rounds. We get the quarterback here. I feel like we can have a good offense as soon as year two in this franchise. Uh... Collins, Blaine Henderson is not somebody that I love the idea of taking with the number three overall pick. He's 23 years old and he can't move. Ratings-wise, awesome. Arm strength-wise, 
awesome. It's got, if you had to say like there are four, four factors to drafting a quarterback, the age, the size, the ratings, and the athleticism, like he's, he's two, two of four, as good as you can get. The other two out of four are about as bad as you can get, which kind of leaves him in the middle of the road. But without a doubt would be an upgrade over Eli Palmer at the most position, most important position in all sports. Um, Danny Goodrich, pros, uh, elite size and athleticism, elite age, really good skills. He's like a high-end four-star prospect for me. I think he's the second best prospect in the draft after Caleb on Richardson. So getting the second best prospect at three, on par for the course. You're, you're getting a player worth the third overall pick in terms of his talent in the class. Cons, how big of a need is corner? Corner is a position that I like to invest in early because I feel like it takes a little bit longer for corners to be consistent. Let's talk about Quincy Boston from the San Antonio Express franchise. We drafted him at 21 years old, 77 overall, superstar dev. I, I feel like Danny Goodrich is going to be somewhere like in a similar vein to that, right? 21 years old, probably going to be a high 70s overall player. It took what Quincy Boston like four years to be like a consistently really good corner. I want to get that invested in that now so that, you know, he can be that lockdown corner sooner into our franchise. But we have John Atkins, who I really like, already there as an outside corner. And then Danny Goodrich, who I also really like, but I would prefer him to be an inside corner just because he has 88 speed. Our corner room would probably be set maybe for the, the rest of our franchise if we were able to snag Danny Goodrich here. But is, you know, the difference between Benjamin Dent, who would currently be our third corner right now. He's also six foot three. It's like 67 overall to Danny Goodrich. How much of an impact is that making compared to getting us a new quarterback? I think. I think I'm going to prioritize Danny Goodrich. I'm going to prioritize Danny Goodrich here. If only because I'll have an opportunity to next year get quarterbacks up to 100% scouting. Now, if it's just a terrible quarterback year, that sucks and we're stuck with Eli Palmer for a third year. I don't love the, the sound of that, honestly. I'm not even done with my... I'm so, I'm so torn on this number three overall pick. So, so torn. I can't even think about past it. But I don't think I don't think who we pick here is going to have much effect on who we pick later because if we don't pick Blaine Henderson, we're not picking quarterback. If we don't pick Danny Goodrich, we're not picking corner. I don't think as much as I like a guy like uh, Harold Wolf, and I said earlier that he would be a good consolation prize. That was when we had pick nineteen and thirty-five. We don't have those picks anymore. We chose instead to get two of our top end players instead of one, and then a guy like Harold Wolf later. David Cooper, my number one non-first round draft pick target is David Cooper in this draft. My number two is Cole Byers. They pick 46 and 67 or whatever, turn into those two players, ecstatic. And we have a pick that's at the very, very end of the third round. We could probably even consider that like having our fourth round pick. My players at the top end of the day three board are these two that are at the top of it right now. Spencer Cheeks and Dennis James. I'd love to come out of the draft with both of these players. Um, I'd also love to come out of this draft with John Howard. These are kind of the three guys that I like the most in terms of day three talent. So, game plan, everything goes right. Caleb on Richardson at one, Danny Goodrich at three, or we trade down. Second round pick, David Cooper. First third round pick, Cole Byers. Second third round pick, Dennis James. Fifth round, Spencer Cheeks. Sixth round, Sean Howard or a punter. That's my game plan. Can we execute it? 
that's what we're that's why you're tuning in the episode to find out let's get the draft under way let's make the pick this one is no drama i think he's the best player in the class guaranteed top five player in this class six foot five 251 out of usc incredible athlete with elite speed and acceleration to go along with great strength a power moves impact block stamina tackle awareness b block shed finesse play rec pursuit only thing below a c is zone coverage and i don't give two hoots about it caleb on richardson welcome to the brooklyn bulls hidden dev 86 speed maybe a little bit lower than i thought but 91 acceleration 83 speed for an outside linebacker is really nice 80 agility change of direction is nice and we get a hidden dev edge rusher something we desperately needed to start off draft number two The Eagles need to replace Jalen Hurts. As an Eagles fan, you, I'm just seeing my hat. I do not want that to happen. I love Jalen Hurts. Don't want to see my boy go. Um, but Larry Palmer, North Dakota State. I think he was one of the two better quarterbacks in this class. I, I would put him at quarterback two. I think he is a fine selection. We'll have to see once we... Get into the draft review here. I'm willing to trade down a couple of spots here. Let's see, down one spot, we pick up a third. That's absurdity. I am 100% doing that. Is there two spots? We can get a third and a sixth. Seems like a no-brainer deal. Do either of these teams need corner though? I don't think the Texans would. The Texans, like, you know, they had Danny Goodrich on the board in the mock drafts, as did the Rams, and they didn't take them, you know, in mock draft five. I think we take this Rams pick just for the extra six round pick, if I'm being honest. We will trade down. It is the 2024 draft, right? Yeah, because they're offering us 2025 picks. That would have been all next year's picks. That would have been devastating. I'm going to trade down two spots here with these Rams. Rams now available at the number three pick. Gets Gabe Vallejo. And at pick number four, the Texans snag quarterback Tom Brackett. He would have been quarterback three or four on my board. Honestly, I think if those, if a lot of the, you know, ranges that he had ended up on the high end, he would have been maybe even quarterback one or two. We'll have to see in the draft preview. There's just so many ranges and unknowns with him. Here at the number five overall pick, we will be taking Danny Goodrich, a six foot two corner, a little bit of a slender man at 185 pounds, but 21 years old. You'll have to see out of Rutgers four two five speed with great change of direction also very important for corners solid jumping is not great but when you're a taller corner you can take less jumping being both man and zone this streams a guy who's got like 77 or 78 in both of his coverages uh b injury a stamina daddy goodrich welcome to the bulls hidden dev once again 90 Seven speed at six foot two is lethal. 85 jumping, much like his new counterpart on the outside, John Atkinson. 94 change of direction is a lot of change of direction. 85 agility. I, I think change of direction matters more to corners than agility does. But really, really like the pick. We get two guaranteed top five talents in the draft with Hidden Dev to start off draft number two. Massive boosts to the defense. The opportunity cost is we lost, you know, another pick in the top end of this draft, and we lost the opportunity to upgrade at the quarterback position. Will it be worth it? Well, it's time for Eli Palmer to show up and prove that it is. The Bulls had two opportunities to go quarterback. They decide to pass on the position. Chargers need to 
replace quarterback, they go with Joseph Ryan. Really good accuracies, just maybe not quite the athlete that I would want with a top end pick. Going through here to pick nine, where the Denver Broncos take Blaine Henderson. Definitely going to take a look at him. See if we made a mistake passing on what could be a franchise quarterback. I think he will be a really good quarterback prospect. Virgil, Virgil Majete, I really like this corner class. He was good. He was just a little bit small. Cornerback size, I felt like, and I, uh, sorry, slot corner size, and we just didn't need one. Josh Benjamin, I feel like I remember being pretty good as well at tackle, but I might be capping on that. Darrell Harmon, defensive tackle, goes to the Lions. Bobby Tarpley here to Jacksonville, corner that we liked. Rick Biggers. That's not the, that's not the face that we saw in the draft pre preview screen. Cowboys up here take a tackle that I don't remember liking. Tracy Emmons. I think he was pretty athletic, but he had like D short accuracy. So that's why he was not on our board. 49ers go defensive tackle, as do the Titans. A little bit of a defensive tackle run here. And now just flip over to offensive tackle. Chewy Spartlo Barto, I don't remember from the corners. Wasn't one of my favorite guys. Kareem Graves. I feel like there was another Graves that I liked. I think Ronald Graves. That was like a second round tackle. I think it looks pretty good to me. Middle linebacker for the Chiefs. Safety for Green Bay. Nick Little ends up going at pick 31. A guy that we'll take a look at I really liked. Division rival and Super Bowl Baltimore Ravens take wide receiver. Now the Eagles have two straight picks here, courtesy of us. They get a center in Kidd and a safety in Carlwood. Pretty confident that the guy we want is still going to be there. If he's not, I would actually cry. Deshaun Borum, a middle linebacker that we like. He was on our board. Harold Wolf goes to the Broncos. The Broncos kind of got like both of our plan Bs. So I think they're having a pretty good draft. If we couldn't get Goodrich, I was interested in Wolf. Uh, also, if we couldn't get Goodrich, I was interested in Henderson. So um, happy with Goodrich, a six foot two corner with 97 speed, of course. But uh, we'll have to take a look at Harold Wolf and just kind of the Broncos draft. I think they've kind of killed it, if I'm being honest. Glad we're not in their division anymore. Because, yeah, I think they've killed this draft. Time for the Bulls. Be back up on the clock. And let's see how far down the next player on our board is. The interesting thing is with us getting that high-end third-round pick, I've kind of lost track of time things here so david cooper is still 33 picks away we can definitely trade down we could get a guy like jacques harper or we could get a guy like where is he oh he's only nine spots away though because i am interested in a guy like brian phillips b juke move b kick return a to c break tackle has the speed has could be a perfect complimentary back to Rashad Grimes. I, if he was available a little bit later, it would be more tempting. I do think we trade back here. I wouldn't even be opposed to getting like a second round next year and a third round this year, something like that. We can get a fourth round this year, and a second round next year. A two and a four. Okay, so I four this year and a two next year. So this is a three, both 
High end three this year. Okay, let's take a look at this one. One of the first picks in the third round. So we'd have three of like the first six or seven picks in the third round. We'd get a third round from them next year as well. Because they think their third rounder next year is going to be much later, but I don't know if it will be. Fourth this and the second next. That red four pick 103, what is that? That's seven or something? I am not opposed to this offer from the Carolina Panthers. I would love, especially because now that we know that quarterback could very well be a need for us next year, I would love to get a good second round pick. That could be ammo for us to trade up into the top draft, top, top of the draft once again if we needed it to be. So something like this Panthers pick is very intriguing to me. We could just trade for a first from the 49ers. They're just coming off the Super Bowl though. This is a very back end third, so it's probably going to be a back end two next year. Like I like those Panthers offer. We get picks seven or something in the fourth round this year, and we get their second round next year, which. Right now, they're projecting to be, what, the 15th pick in the second round? That's because that's what they were last year. They were, moved up from 15 to 7 this year. So if we can get, you know, pick 40 for next year, that could easily be used as ammo to move up in next year's draft. That's what we're going to do. Now I have to take a look at where we pick next. We pick next in about 24 picks. I would like to be 100% sure I'm getting David Cooper. So I'm thinking we go to pick, let's see, what was he? He's 33 picks away. I think we can go 18 picks from now, which puts us fourteen plus 18 is 32. So at the very end of this, let's go to maybe like pick 28 or something like that. I thought the game was broken for a second. Jarek Farmer is the corner that we liked. Let's go to, yeah, maybe pick 28. Let's also see, I want to see, is he the top left guard? He is. Maybe pick 25, just to be a little bit more safe. It shouldn't take much maybe just like the six that we acquired and maybe the one that we already had as well Brian Phillips goes like him I want to take a look at him Alex Thomas goes like Tim just didn't want to take a corner that early let's trade up with the Giants here do not want to move it like that would honestly ruin my like draft hopes that I had for this draft if we missed out on David Cooper so we're going to do 67 and I'm going to just see if maybe this sick it won't be it will be that is enough okay I thought we were going to need to add in both it is 10 picks I thought we would need both 6 though turns out we didn't Let's go up and get our left tackle for next year. Hopefully he has hidden dev. David Cooper, round one to two talent in this class. Great strength, good speed, great acceleration. A impact block, lead block, and run block finesse. B pass block, pass block finesse, run block. Stamina, awareness, the works. 21 years old, six foot five, 322 is great size. Out of Wisconsin. Fun fact, that's where Rakeem McKinney was from. And 
I'm betting Rakeem McKinney vouched for this guy's talent working, you know, so frequently against him in, tr- in spring training and stuff in college here. David Cooper is hidden development. Three for three on hidden development is quite nice. Uh, I was honestly expected all three of them to be hidden development, though. So just based on kind of their player built and what you typically get with Madden. 90 strength. He's got some nice speed on him. 83 acceleration. Good pick here for us at the end of round two. Let's get to our next pick. So the next guy that we absolutely really want is Cole Byers. He's like a round three to four guy though. So he shouldn't be anywhere close on this board. He is not anywhere close. He's 43 spots away. We could even trade down again if he wanted to. I might because we're like what 10 spots away less ronald graves that was the tackle i was talking about that i liked a decent bit in this class nothing spectacular though Devonte pace i remember being on our board So let's just uh, take a look at where he ranks in terms of defensive tackles. Are there a bunch of defensive tackles ahead of him as well? There are. There's three. So I'm comfortable trading down here. He's still like 30 picks away. We're not going to trade 30 picks away, but I could at least move down 10, maybe even 15 spots. So on a 20, 24 third. So that's 73. That's... Only a few picks away. Next year, fifth, not really enough. This year, fourth. No, next year, fourth. That's better. Seventy-five. Next year, four again. Next year, six isn't good enough. So it looks like a next year four might be the best value we're gonna get here. You know, this year four and the next year six, if we go down all the way to 82. How many spots away is 82? We're at pick what, 70? 69, nice. We should pick him with the 69th pick if we're being honest. This is 13 spots away. Might be our best option though we get a fourth and then the next year's sixth i'm doing it trading up what trading down excuse me with the cowboys we now have a pick 13 slots away still three defensive tackles away ahead of him and then, you know, in terms of where he is on the board, still 32 spots away. So we're going to be, what, 18 spots ahead, something like that. I'm just doing quick math here. I'm not trying to be right. Um, they do take one of the defensive tackles, though. So there's only two defensive tackles ahead of him now. Jacques Harper goes. He should have been the guy that we put the focus on. Had I known what his rank, he had so many things that important skills that were not revealed. The ones that were revealed were all A's, but they were the less important skills, right? Like, hit power is nice, but is it as important as power move, something like that, you know? Not quite. So had I known more about him, might have prioritized him. But um, that was just a mistake on my part. Made a couple of mistakes in terms of the scouting process. And as someone who typically prides himself on having a good uh, scouting process, this was not my best year. Um, Cole Byers is still here. Um, so yeah, we're taking him. Six foot one, 359 pounds, 21 years old, out of San Diego State. Put up 44 reps. This dude's a beast with the elite strength. Play rec and box shed and awareness. He's going to be able to come in and be an impact on the run. You know, Are we going to all of a sudden have a good run defense? I don't think so. But are we going to be better than the last year? Yes, and we desperately need to be. Cole Byers is the pick. Hidden Dev. 98 strength 67 speed is not a lot 77 acceleration honestly isn't bad 
98 strength, 360 pounds. This guy should help us stop the run. And we desperately, desperately need him to. So I really like the pick. And we also haven't picked a hidden, uh, sorry, a normal dev player yet. Uh, next pick is that pick round three, pick 32. Um, let's just take one more look at, uh, sorry, wrong screen here. Let's take one more look at our favorites board. I mean, it could we get both of them? Oh, that'd be nuts, wouldn't it? Uh, if I could get all three of these players, we could call this like a great draft and just, you know, ship it and be done with it. See if our guys are still there. First up of our top end of the day three guys is going to be Dennis James. He has eight power moves. He could end up being actually pretty bad, but I am just very intrigued by this player. Dennis James, five foot 11, 250 pounds out of Alabama. I mean, they recruit the best. So if you're like super undersized, you got to be good. And he is good at one thing, power moves, nothing else. Hidden dev again. Let's go. This defense is getting massive, massive upgrades. We have drafted four hidden dev players on defense. We were so, so like helplessly bad last year. And so this is massive. We are having an incredible draft, even better than I could have hoped. Spencer Cheeks is up next. Six foot two, 301, not great. 22 years old is fine out of Louisville. Um, slightly above average athlete. He's going to be able to come in and pass protect. There's a lot of C's and F to F's there. Hopefully there are more C's, not S. But uh, in terms of a day three offensive lineman, decent athleticism, has a high you know, floor just because he can pass protect. So let's take him. And we have hidden dev once again. 87 strength, 68 speed, 79 acceleration. I forgot to check and prove it to you guys that I did cheat in this draft class. It's typically something I like to do before the drafts, especially when you have a run like this. It's kind of, I, I would honestly be suspicious of myself. I promise you I didn't cheat. Cheeks, I thought, I legitimately thought was going to be normal dev. Dennis Allen, I had no idea. Other than that, I kind of felt like everyone was going to be hidden dev though. So... I don't know. I don't really know what to tell you. I promise I didn't cheat. I'll show you with the next draft. Lastly here, we have John Howard. Undersized dude, just 5'8", 181, but he has got some wheels. 424 at his pro day. Um, probably not going to be a good player, but he's going to have a baseline that we can come in. We desperately need more deep thrust on this team. I think he could maybe come in and help provide that early on in his career. Does have normal devs, so we will not have an all hidden dev draft. Unfortunate, obviously, but 97 speed, 94 acceleration uh, is a good, is a, is a decent start for him. We've kind of already gone through our game plan here as we get to the fifth round and the third pick. I don't know if there's anyone else that I truly want. Um, I guess we could take a swing here at Brian Jeffries. As he has, you know, good speed for sure. B big tackle, B vision. Not going to be a great back in terms of, you know, what? no, we're not going to take him. We're going to give Russell Love, like, if we're not sure about a back that I really like, why not give a guy that we know that we like in Russell Lovelock, or at least was solid for us last year? Let's give him another year in his role. But kind of without that, I don't really know if I want to take anyone here. So. I'm going to try to see if we can't get a fourth rounder next year. We can get one from the Bears. They got really good in this offseason. So I don't know if I want to do that. The Bucks could be interesting. Let's take uh, this Titans pick here for next year in the fourth round. Found a partner that I like here in round six. Wade Kovacs has B awareness, B accuracy, great power. Let's take a swing. 94 kick power, normal dev. I don't really care as much with a puncher. And that is it for this draft. And now let's take a look at this draft class. And boy, is it one to get excited about. Let's start with our first overall pick, Kate LaVon. 
Richardson, 78 overall power rusher out of USC, comes in with 84 power moves. That is awesome. 76 block shedding and 74 finesse moves as well as awesome. Has to swim in the bull rush straights. Uh, playing up to 91 injury with 95 stamina is awesome. Very excited about having Caleb on on the team. And then turns out I thought he was the best player and he was the second. Turns out I was needed to flip those around. I guess I actually haven't looked at the rest of the league. I'm just assuming that these are the best two players in the class. 97 speed with 79 man coverage, 78 zone coverage. Uh, catching playing up to 74 isn't bad. So press playing up to 75 also isn't bad. 98 stamina, uh, 98 injury, 99 stamina is incredible as well. Very happy to have Danny Goodrich in our corner room. Uh, David Cooper was a 73 overall guard. He drops an overall being, being kicked out to tackle, but uh, 94 strength playing up to 76 pass block, 73 run block. Really, that pass block power needs to come up, but we kind of already knew that was going to be the case. 94 injury, 91 stamina is really good as well. Very happy about these players. Cole Byers, 76 overall nose tackle for us. <laughs> Gets a 99 strength off the rip, 76 block shed, 76 play rec, 83 tackle. Power moves is nice, but uh, needs a little bit of work. Uh, he has 85 stamina, which is actually pretty high, especially for a nose tackle. I see a lot of Madden generated defensive tackles coming with like 72 stamina. So the fact that it's that high is pretty good. Dennis James, not a very high overall. 67. It was a 68 at end, so he drops an overall as well. But uh, comes in, he's going to have 78 power moves. Going to need to work on the block shedding. But um, I don't even know if he'll be in our base package. I guess he would be if we decided to make Rakeem McKinney a rush defense to tackle and keep on the interior. I don't know what I feel about that though, but hey, we have a hidden dev. Now I was sad about losing Frank Brewer, but if Dennis James is the replacement, I'm more than happy with it. He's already as good and he's a few years younger. Spencer Cheeks here at 76 overall as a pass protector is kind of nutty. He is not Cheeks as I say. What is kind of Cheeks though is 61 lead block, 76 impact. Those things are so hard to Upgrade and so the fact that they're that low. Also, 82 injury, 84 stamina, not great as well. Those things maybe keep him from being like a second contract guy for us because he's got some holes that are really impossible for me to improve at. And so that's unfortunate, but um, at least for now, at the very least, an upgrade at guard. John Howard here. Not a great player, but 69 overall, which, you know, of course is nice. I and mean, he's got the speed, right? Uh, releases playing up into the 70s, deep route to 75. Jumping's at 90. And um, he can r return kicks for us next year, I think, for sure. He'll be doing at the very least. If not, sprinkling in, like, maybe a rotation between Howard and Holloman as that third wide receiver on our team. Punter. Wade Kovacs, I haven't gone in and actually edited him or anything, so I don't know if this is going to be his final face, but 94 kick power, 76, 78 accuracy, excuse me, is nice. Let's take a look at the NFL draft in general and see. First things I want to do is take a look at these quarterbacks. So Larry Palmer ends up being a 73 in dev, 91 throw power, maybe a little bit lower than what I want. That's actually what Brandon Nash came in with, I think. Maybe 92 he had, I can't remember. But 87 starting short accuracy is really nice. 78 medium and 78 deep aren't too bad either. 83 on the run, 80 under pressure, 80 break sack. 84 speed and 88 acceleration. That's, like, good. If you're not looking for, like, a legit runner at quarterback but want, like, more of the improviser type, that's where you want it to be. Let's see what his dev trait is for the Eagles. I think... I mean, obviously, you'd like to have Jalen Hurts, but I think they got a good player here. Uh, Sar Dev for him. Second quarterback off the board was Tom Brackett. He has a 76 overall. So his medium accuracy was definitely on that high end. That's A there. I imagine those other at least weren't on the low end. Pretty bad injury there, but 90. Uh, Tom Brackett's pretty good. Again, a major reason I had him either quarterback three or four, I think quarterback three was 
the fact that I just didn't, a lot of those things were still ranges. And I think he just ended up on the high end of a lot of those ranges. Joseph Ryan was quarterback four for me. He is 74 overall, six foot. Everyone so far has been hitting dev. 88 short accuracy, 81 mid, 76 deep. Uh, does not have the speed at 74. Let's see what his dev trait is so far. It has been star for everyone. Will it remain so? Wait, Will with Ryan. So there's one opportunity. Lane Henderson's the last guy. 75 overall. So the second highest overall player is the oldest at 23. He is in dev as well. 95 throw power, 81 deep, 80 mid, mid, 78 short. That's good enough at all those places. 80 play action, 79 under pressure, 81 break sack. Super slow though. I don't want to trade for him. That'd be funny if I did, but um, that would not be draft only. That would be draft and trade only. So 75 overall. Is he just star? He is. So that's up to you. Do you think we do you think we missed going for Goodrich, who we don't know? He could be just a star, he could be superstar, could be X Factor at 79 overall. I don't think he's generational. You know, he doesn't have either of the coverages in the 80s or anything like that, but he's a very high generated player. Should we have taken Blaine Henderson instead? Rocket arm, improved accuracy, no movement skills, 23 years old. Again, it was the kind of the fact that he had couple of drawbacks and the fact that Danny Goodrich didn't is what me made made me choose him in the end but um let's take a look at some of the best players in this class Virgil Majetti I did like him like I said he was a little bit undersigned 5'10 199 he's got some speed though good man coverage corner uh the catching is pretty good as well let's see what kind of player the commanders got here who they also had Got Jalen Hurts in the offseason. So, Commanders did a good job improving their roster. Montel Toller, a uh, receiver with 99 speed. Okay. 77 overall, 99 speed. 80 deep routes. This this is the, the guy, right? If we were taking... Rece oh, this was the guy we wanted to pair with Deacon Burgess and... Uh, like, that's the build. That's the build. Of course, we weren't taking a first-round pick on receiver this year, but if we were, that's the build we were going to do it with. Uh, Spencer Cheeks getting in there. Byers. Tomorrow Goodwin was a third-round receiver. That's pretty good. He's a slot guy, though. Not Wasn't really looking towards that. Uh, that's that's Johnny Lovelock uh, for us. Well, he is faster than Johnny Lovelock. Um... Let's take a look at some of the players that were high on my board that we didn't end up taking. Let's take a look at here at Rick Biggers. Hidden Dev, 75 overall. Good player. Bad injury, though. And, yeah, the, the picture and the player do not match in the slightest. Um, Nick Little, I want to look at, 72. Normal Dev. But 90 speed, 86 hit power, 74 block shed. Wish coverage is a little bit better, but still, I think a good pick for the Falcons there. Um, going down the board here, got a couple 75s here. Borum was on our board. Harold Wolf, this, this is who I want to see for sure. Hidden Dev, 21 years old, 95 speed. Coverage isn't as good. Catching is ne nowhere near as good. 63 catching, that can get you in trouble. Um, star dev. So Danny Goodrich is at least as good. Might have even better developments. We'll have to see this coming season. Um, it's another guy we want to see. Bobby Harris is a guy we like. 75, he's the 23 year old guy. Six foot three, hidden dev, 95 speed. Like there were like really big and good corners in this class. I was very surprised. Probably the best cover uh, corner class that uh, didn't have like the A zone and A man guy, right? They're like obviously, um, what do you call it? Generational guy. Nobody generational, but really good. Let's look at Tracy Edmonds. Didn't really draft him because yeah, Medium and short is not good enough. Has the big arm, has the accuracy, though, and is faster than a guy like 
Henderson. If the only thing we wanted to do as an offense was get it downfield to Deacon Burgess, that'd be better. So I want to check out the other nose tackle. Went to the Chiefs here. 74 overall, hidden dev as well. He had 96 strength, so a little bit less strength, a little bit less block shedding. Worst power move. Worst stamina. One year older. Unless he's superstar or X Factor, I think Cole Byers is the better player. He is superstar though. I think the nose tackle build is one of the builds that has like high normal and high superstar chance, but low star and X Factor chance. So we might have got a superstar ourselves in Cole Byers. We'll have to see though. Is there anyone else that was big on our board that we missed? I don't think there is. Let's take a quick look at our division starting with Cincinnati in this draft they did get a big time receiver they need help they lost two of their best Jerry McRae has a good start especially because he's got good kick return skills a little bit of make you miss after the catch skills 5'11", 215 he's kind of got similar to a Jamar Chase build just not quite as good obviously star depth for him so a good pick to help. And they got another 70 plus overall. Another guy, 97 speed. Honestly, really similar to the guy that we got, except they got hidden dev on him. Why wasn't he on our board? Probably because it's just a miss by me. Was he a fourth round player? He's a fifth round player. I miss on him. He's better than the guy that we got in the fourth. Um, Bengals, we have the Ravens and the Browns to look at. So the Browns didn't pick until the third round in this draft, got themselves a 72 normal slot receiver. Solid looking player, that's their only 70 plus. Not a great deal of improvement for that team. Let's look at the D Super Bowl champs now. So a lot of good receivers going in this Everyone got a 70 plus receiver in this draft, except for us. We got a 69 receiver. We're in number one. Marquise. Lam I'm gonna have to learn how to say that name before. So he's gonna be in our division. Lamonte, Lamonte? I have no idea. So bunch of receivers nobody else really that good entered our division outside of our team let's go through the preseason and see if any scenarios pop up fill the roster out and uh if necessary i'll see you guys at cuts if nothing happens before preseason week four we are in week three of the preseason we have a training camp standout scenario let's go ahead and take a look at that one we got Calevon Richardson no I kind of got ruined because th this guarantees star dev so we know Calevon Richardson is a star dev um, we'll give him five tackling what's even worse is that that's like off-ball linebacker stuff that like you don't have an opportunity to upgrade block shedding or power moves or anything. But uh, he'll have a training camp breakout to come week one. The first of our mentors for this year will be at left tackle for Jordan Mills, who will mentor David Cooper. Our second offensive mentor will be Jonathan Harrison, who will mentor Taylor Ramirez, trying to get him up to 85 overall as superstar. Third offensive mentor will be Cole Beasley trying to get Johnny Lovelock up to 85 overall as soon as we can. Defense is a lot harder to figure out. Uh, we're going to go left outside linebacker for Caleb on Richardson. We're also going to go corner here. We have three guys that we like and one of them is superstar. So got to get some XP for him. And lastly here, it is defensive tackle. Hate to leave a position like uh, left end off for Ricky McKinney, but just got so many good young defenders that uh, I couldn't really do anything about it. And here we are in week one. The offseason is 
officially over. So not much to show in the way of cuts. None that were too, you know, gut wrenching of decisions. Just kind of want to take a look at where our roster stands after the offseason. Have some upgrades that we'll do here in a minute, but offensively. We got a couple of offensive linemen. The position, you know, this and quarterback were the positions that I really wanted to hit in this offseason. We were able to hit two of the three things that I wanted to hit. I will take that. Defensively, everything that I wanted to hit, really except for safety, was done. And let's just kind of take a look at the two different team needs of both before and after the offseason. I mean, I think we did really well. Got a lot better at edge. Uh, we're looking really good at corner now. Offensive line's looking a lot better. And so uh, just front seven in general, just between last year and this year, I think is our biggest area of improvement. Uh, but really we improved just kind of all over the defense. Very happy with what we did in this off season. But you let me know if you think there was maybe some things that we missed on that we could have done better let's get some of these upgrades out of the way as the last thing we will do here in this episode i'm just gonna spend a one on deep threat here for deacon burgess mentioned in the highlight episode last episode that i wanted to see him be better there i mean plus four meter mount is certainly gonna help up to 90 there that's more the intermediate where i felt like he actually did pretty well last year and i just Continue to make a strength of strength here for Rashad Grimes. Two stiff arm, break tackle, trucking. I think that puts, yeah, everything that has to do with power back is now 85 plus. So maybe we start to go over to elusive back, maybe make him a little bit better in that area now. Uh, Johnny Lovelock, continue to want to try to upgrade his release and his catch in traffic. Uh, no release there, but a couple catch in traffic is good, up to an 88. John Atkinson. Not going to play corner two for us this year. Let's see. I think those definitely need zone more than man, but he needs both enough that we can do slot here, and I wouldn't feel bad about it. I think it's a one coverage upgrade. It's about as bad as it gets with the uh, slot, if I'm being honest. Typically, the slot ones are a little bit better than that. We'll also do slot here for Clayton Godfrey. And, you know, despite going up to superstar dev, he gets demoted to slot corner only. You just, you see a player that looks the caliber of Danny Goodrich. You just kind of have to draft him. Uh, we'll go hybrid here for Jesse Byers. He gets a couple men coverage as well. Eli Palmer. You know, the biggest maybe thing that we missed out on this offseason was quarterback. Decided to give Eli Palmer a second year at it. His leash is going to be... Very small this year, though, so he's going to have to come out and earn another year uh, this year. Or else, like I said, unless it's a terrible quarterback class, we're taking one next year. If it's as good as it was this year, I mean, I would have been happy with pretty much any of the quarterbacks. Uh, maybe not, like, the Chargers one. I, I wasn't super excited about him, but anyway, I think they were all good, and they were all upgrades over Eli Palmer. He's going to have to prove that... Uh, he deserves the job after this one year. He's got the hottest seat, you could say, going into this year. Very excited for year two. Hope you guys are too. I'll be back soon with the next episode. And I will see you then.